Wherever you are, I greet you. My name is Dan Oronje because I'm originally from Gim, Kenya. Some of my friends call me Ode because I'm an actor. Others call me Dan Orange because I am also a businessman now living in the United States. This July will mark 35 years of practicing as a registered occupational therapist. Yes, for these few years, I've been in a profession that seeks to retrain anyone afflicted or limited by disease or injury to overcome them and return to purposeful or gainful activity. But today, I'm not here to talk about art or medical rehabilitation. Today, I want to talk about business and the infrastructure that enables the enterprise. And when I'm done, I am hoping I shall, I shall have convinced you to join my global merchants platform. It's all right. It's all right. I understand you're busy. So I will get straight to the point. But before I do, please allow me to ask you to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Click to like this presentation and copy and share the link to this video because I'd like many people to view my message. Thank you. So how and why do I want you to join my global merchants platform? And what is the global merchant platform anyway? It's all right. Here are three reasons. Number one, the world trade or the global trade is now dominated by the big companies. Number two, these big companies or big tech, as they are popularly called, own the infrastructure that makes the trade biased towards them. Number three, the World Trade Organization stands for fair trade to ensure that trade flows freely and smoothly and to open trade for the benefit of all. But trade cannot be fair everywhere because the infrastructure is not fair everywhere. Now, who is responsible for building the infrastructure to make global trade a fair affair? It's our local and national government with the use of our natural resources and taxes, and preferably with our local manpower. This ensures that folks will go to school, graduate, and be hired for these jobs. But we know how it goes. Jobs are lacking because a politician here or there embezzle the fans here and there. Funds for roads. An engineer or a doctor failed to use funds adequately to build a hospital or school or a market. And therefore, there are no jobs. Every politician says they'll create hospitals, schools, or create jobs, jobs, and jobs for the youth. Elections come, elections go, but few deliver this promise. Yet, in the advent of a pandemic, we have learned that roads, hospitals, schools, or stadiums are not the only infrastructure that is needed to create and maintain jobs. Thank goodness that in this day and age, many ordinary folks have cell phones. And thank goodness that even corrupt politicians and professionals all want to ensure that they have signal in, an, in any area they travel to. Therefore, cell phones, towers, have reached many remote places. That's a good thing. But the new infrastructure is the social media. With it, we can now talk to family and friends. We can send messages, 
pictures, money in a flash, and even watch live events, news, movies, music performances, you name it. Yes, anyone owning a functioning cell phone owns and is part of the global infrastructure. However, this global infrastructure would be useless if you, the individual, refused or was completely unable to participate. I'm also aware that there are many more who don't yet own a cell phone. Why? Because they don't have a job. And hence, they don't have the money to buy one. They can't sell much locally because they lack the funds to become industrious, to farm, to create art, or produce products, or rent out their small real estate to regional or foreign tourists. Be that as it may, I don't know where you are watching this video presentation from, but wherever you are, I'd like to ask you these questions as an individual good citizen of your country. When was the last time you bought or sold a product online? Was this transaction an intra-country trade, meaning it was within your country? Or was it an intra-continental trade, meaning it was within the continent of your country? Or perhaps it was an intercontinental or global trade, right? Whatever it was, wherever, we, wherever it was, it's all right. The next question I want to ask you is this. If you sold a product, did you make good profit to benefit you and your family or your community or village or town? If you bought a product, to whom did you surrender part of the money you would have otherwise made had you sold this product by your roadside or at a local market? Was it eBay? Was it Amazon? Or maybe it was on Facebook? Now, don't get me wrong. I am not anti-big tech or corporations. It's all right. They can make their own money. What I'm asking is this. When we give so much only to these big tech companies that do not reinvest in our communities, are we really making a fair trade? Are we trading or are we being traded in a whole new way and at a different level? Would you rather buy from billionaires or directly from a merchant trying to uplift, uplift their family from poverty? The answer is that global trade is slanted to favor big tech and constricted by our very own poor or corrupt local managers and politicians, hindering easy and fair participation by the common person, who already is part of the global market, but lacks adequate online infrastructure to trade. For this reason, I present Isorite, the global merchants platform. Here, a legal, a merchant or, would sell legal commodities or services or skill or real estate or media, will list them and merchants anywhere on this planet will purchase them. It's complex, yet it's the simplest infrastructure that will have no borders or boundaries and will connect African cities and African countries to African cities and African countries in order to open up commerce between the common or the complex person anywhere and create jobs. They once talked about united Africa. Nothing can unite Africa than fair trade. Here is how this will work. A merchant in Kisumu, Kenya, will be able to list themselves as a chef and get hired directly by a tourist from Germany for a four-week assignment. A merchant from Sambweni, Kenya, will list a Kikoi 
and sell it to another in San Francisco, USA. A merchant filmmaker in Lagos will list their movies and have anywhere, anyone anywhere in the global market purchase the codes to view it. Surely, the goal should not be to list a video on YouTube and let people watch it for free and the filmmaker only gets the proceeds from advertisement. No. Anyway, in the global trade platform, a merchant in Dar es Salaam will be able to list themselves as a driver and get hired directly by a tourist from France. A merchant apartment owner in Gaborone, Botswana, will be able to list a room or an entire apartment for a two or a six week lease to a tourist from England. I could go on and on, but I'm sure you get my drift. One more thing, global trade is headed in the direction of creating generational wealth in cryptocurrency. How soon is a common man in Africa going to catch up with this when he doesn't even have a job or a means to turn his skill or goods into the money we know today? Here is the good part. At Isorite, the global merchants platform, a merchant could wager or create requisition and get reciprocation for an exchange of their product or skill for a direct product or skill. Does that sound complicated? This used to be called barter trade. Yes, with careful fabrication of pathways in the software at Isorite, I will make this happen. Now, the question I'm sure many are asking is, how will this be possible without surrendering some of the money to big tech anyway? Well, it will happen because I'm fabricating the infrastructure to make it possible. Soon, I and my team will be launching online the Global Merchants Platform, the website and the app. True, as the owner of it's all right, I will retain a very small percentage of the transactions in order to keep this global merchants platform operating smoothly. And no, I am not a big tech corporation. I'm just like you, a trader. I'm interested in trying to facilitate trade in order to create jobs and uplift the common man like me who resides in Africa. But it matters not where they are, they are anywhere, anywhere in the world. So, if you join our global merchant platform, you will become part of the infrastructure that will facilitate free and fair participation in global trade, as envisioned by the World Trade Organization. Join me on May 7th, this year, 2022, at 7 p.m. Eastern U.S. time at the live launch. Thank you for listening to this message. And please, again, i like to request you like this video, share it, and subscribe to this channel so that I will update you on the progress we are making. And we'll also be able to share the prototype of this global merchants platform prototype. Take care. May God bless you. Have a great day.